Hey y'all, today we're coming at you again from the Big Bend National Park down here in the very, very southwest end of Texas. And we're also gonna be making you some barbecue cola ribs. All oh, while having a whole lot of fun. Yeah, everybody's so. jumping out of the bathhouse and into the water and screaming. <laughs> so um, maybe I don't wanna bring my bikini down here. <laughs> I don't think you wanna see that anyway. It's absolutely beautiful. Hi y'all, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy from our camper kitchen down in Big Bend, Texas. You know why they call it Big Bend, Texas? We don't either because we haven't found that part, but it's huge down here. That could be part of it. This place is enormous. The mountains are gorgeous. The colors from the sun hitting the sky and the mountains and the prairies. Over the mountains and the prairies. Maybe that's where the song was written. Who knows but this is an awesome place to be and it's an awesome place to eat some good food and that's what we're showing you how to do today and today we are going to make barbecue cola ribs in our slow cooker in our camper kitchen now y'all know that we're doing low carb and this is going to be a family dinner so we want to stick to that little bit of a tradition and what we're going to do is use the recipe from bacon and butter the ultimate ketogenic diet cookbook can you find this on Amazon? Yes. Cool, then we'll put it down in the link down below if you want to see a referral link to this book. And if you don't want to do low carb, you don't have to. There's in, There are ingredients you can substitute to make it, well, carby, if you want to. Right. We're gonna try this out and see how well it is from the book. Now, I want to preface this. It's my, my <laughs> paper holder, my paperweight. Because down here we don't have Wi-Fi really well. We definitely don't have cell service, so right now that's all my cell phone could be used for is paperwork. <laughs> but um, in this recipe, there are some ingredients that we don't have in our camper kitchen, so we're going to do some substitutions. I'll let you know what the book says to do, and I'll let you know what we're going to do in the meantime. Either and way, I'm hoping it's going to be good. The book is for a uh, <laughs> the book is for a sauce, not for barbecue ribs. We're just adding right. the sauce and doing it our own way. Yeah, this is this is actually the recipe we're gonna use is for the barbecue sauce that you could put on ribs or burgers or what ha chicken. But it's very similar to a, a method that we've seen people yeah. use for, and we even have, I can't remember, I think we've done a pork loin like this before. Mm -hmm. So it's we're pretty gonna, much a braising is what it is. Yeah, and so we're gonna use this sauce on our ribs and then we're gonna and then we'll turn it into a sauce afterwards. You know, yes. like if, if you've seen on when we did our maple whiskey ribs, I put all that stuff together, cooked it in the ribs, and then made a reduction later, which made the barbecue sauce to go over it. We're going to do the exact same thing, only we're going to use a low-carb version this time just to see how well it is. Cause and reduction is just a fancy word. Yeah, reduction is a fancy word for we're taking the water out of it. Yeah. We're reducing the water we're out of it. Cook it reduction. We're going to cook it down, thicken it up, put it on these ribs, and then hopefully, if the weather holds like it is, we're going to put them on the grill to finish them off. That's later, because right now we need a lot of time in the meantime to cook these ribs down. And the reason we're doing ribs, there's there's a lot of action going on outside, by the way. We're in an RV park, so you're going to hear some background noises, including some ukulele music. That's just my kid. She's outside practicing her ukulele because she's good with it. But the reason we're going to do ribs is because we went to the Big Bend National Park yesterday and there's an exhibit inside the National Park which has a bunch of fossils. Dinosaur bones, uh, old fossilized trees, uh, vines, you name it. Creepy fish. A, a great big old creepy fish from hundreds of millions of years ago or about 120 million years ago to start out with. Where we're sitting, this was an ocean. That's right y'all, we're in an ocean a long time ago and there were many years and and you've got the cretaceous period you've got the mesozoic period you got all you got all kinds of different timelines and i'm not a geologist or a, a dinosaurologist or anything so i don't know all of them times but i've been reading up a little bit over time there's been many different fossils that have been deposited within what are now the mountains here and Big Bend. And that kind of made me think of Fred Flintstone. And when you think of Fred Flintstone, you think about when they're in the drive-thru and they give this big old slab of ribs on top of his car, turns his car over. <laughs> well, I'm That gonna... was a leap. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, we're having ribs because there's no place to get food around here and Chris had ribs in the freezer. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> our, our closest Walmart is like an hour and a half. It's like over 100 miles away. All they have down here is little convenience stores and we're getting sick of lunch meat. Uh, well, there is no lunch meat. At the well, that's true. This little, this little store here down here doesn't have Anywho, we're getting off the subject. <laughs> right now, we're going to yabba-dabba do this recipe. What you're going to need uh, are the following. 
<laughs> ribs. We're using baby backs. I've already got them ready to go in the slow cooker. Uh, what I'm thinking is I'm going to flip them where it's meat side down, if you know what I mean. That way that meat is going to soak in all those juices and everything. So turn them upside down in there. This is a long rack of ribs, so I cut it in half, put it in the slow cooker. And now to the sauce. What you're going to need is a tablespoon of butter, and I've already got some melted right here. If I don't act soon, it won't be melted, so let's act soon. Uh, we need a half a cup of finely chopped onion. You want one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic. You also want to have one and a half cups of a sugar-free uh, soda, cola, pop, whatever part of the country you're from. We're using Coke Zero, and that's just because I like it the best. And you also need three quarter cup of tomato paste. I already have that. This is three quarters cup, six ounces. I did the math. I'm right. And if you're eating low carb, check your labels. Yeah, check your labels. Some have more sugar content than others. This yes. is a very low sugar content. Yeah. Um, our dog's growling because people are outside. Uh, you want one half cup of water, one quarter cup of sugar free ketchup. Got that right there. One, ta one tablespoon of, and here comes the argument, Wooster sauce. Wooster, I can't even say it when I say it like that. This stuff, here. We get ours from Walmart. It's a great value. That stuff, Wooster, Shire, whatever. You also want to have three tablespoons of... <gasps> oh! You want to throw stuff around in your location. Camper fowl. Large man, small kitchen, Bo. things are going to fly. <laughs> Moo. Mustard. That was three tablespoons of mustard. I'm running out of room here. You want one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. That's going to give your heat. We don't have any cayenne pepper, but what we're fully stocked on, slap your mama. Guess what slap your mama has in it? Red pepper. It works. <laughs> heat. That's what we're looking for is a little bit of heat. Uh, one teaspoon of liquid smoke. Right here. Uh, one half teaspoon of paprika. Paprika. We've had this argument. I call it what I call it, the red stuff. And we have some. This is good. And you also want to have a half teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And then by my wife, what we're going to do different here, since we don't have the cayenne pepper, we're going to use this. And per my wife's request, because she really likes the spice, we're going to put some cumin in it because she likes it. Cumin kind of gives a smoky, earthy flavor to it anyway. So we're going to use, I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, about a teaspoon of that as well just to give that flavor to make the boss happy. A tablespoon. If you heard that, we're going to put a tablespoon in there. So we'll get started in a bowl. I'm going to put in my cola since it's right here. So there's my cola. Still fizzy. Good stuff. Uh, my butter, right in there. Let me, again, Here, this is a small space. Turn, turn I, this sideways. My wife's helping me turn this sideways, just like that. That'll work for now. So let me grab my spatula. There goes my butter. And we're just gonna mix all of these ingredients together. The butter's gonna add more fat to it, which is okay. We like it to fat. Uh, what do we have next? We got the minced garlic. What did you do with the minced garlic? Here it is. Found it. Got it. And we want one and a half tablespoons. So here's one tablespoon. And I'm not, if I'm not accurate, exact with this, I don't care. I'm still going to eat it. There's a tablespoon. And there is about a half a tablespoon. So a tablespoon and a half of garlic. Go ahead and slide my onion here. I'm not going to use all this onion. I'll end up saving some of this, but about a half cup be right about there. Finely minced, chopped, not minced, but finely chopped, she says. Finely chopped to me is minced. Good enough for me. Right there. Now we want our tomato paste. What do I do with that? Here it is. Right in there, the whole shebang into the bowl. Tomato paste is very thick. That's going to give your acid flavor to it, your acidic citrusy flavor, I guess. I think it's going to go really good. All right. 
So we've got our tomato paste. And now we want a half a cup of water. I got plenty of that right here. I don't know how much because I can't see my measurements right there. Half a cup of water in the bowl. Now we want to one tablespoon. Yeah, better wipe off my finger. It looks like I cut myself. I didn't. Not this time. No, but I've I've had some some messes down here. All right. So we want a tablespoon of our Worcestershire. Do your sauce. dry spices for, first, baby. But then I'm going to do my dry spices first because. See? Well, because you don't want to get it wet and then stick it in your dry spices. So That's true. So let's move on to our teaspoon of our, what we're going to use instead of cayenne pepper, which is the wrong. You would be mad at me if I put a tablespoon <laughs> in there. That would have made it spicy. I was going to say, you could go on and put that tablespoon of cumin in there. So now we're going to put in our teaspoon of heat, which is going to be our slap your mama or your chili powder, depending on what you got, or cayenne pepper. Anything will work if it's got some heat in it. Don't use ghost pepper. Don't use Carolina Reaper. Unless you really want that much heat. I don't. And you want to do you one and a half tablespoons. Honey, you've already put your garlic in. I put the garlic in already? Yeah. Oh, I did! <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on down to our paprika. We want one half teaspoon of paprika. <laughs> kind of got my ingredients all scattered here. It's like here. a game. One half teaspoon. Boom, right in there. And then she wants a tablespoon of cumin. She's the boss. Just, I will. Just scoop it out, baby. Oh, lordy. There you go. Tablespoon. Sort of of cumin and now we want to use our wet ingredients would be our tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce that's what I call it tablespoon shire sauce right in there and a quarter cup of sugar-free ketchup Do we have a quarter cup in here? Yes, we do. We sure do. Quarter cup sugar-free ketchup. Right in there. Use my spatula. Put it right in there. I swear there's a bowl behind this. <laughs> You're not just fleeing it. It looks like floor. I'm throwing it on the counter. I'll show you here in a minute what she looks like. All right, water, sugar-free ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons of mustard. Right, right. One, two, well, that comes out of there real clean. Two, that one didn't. Three tablespoons of mustard. Here, my kid out there practicing her ukulele she's getting really good at it all right and then one teaspoon of our liquid smoke this also helps definitely with the smoky flavor oh, that smells good one teaspoon and this is good since i'm not using a charcoal grill for the ribs it'll give it that smoky flavor this is natural mesquite mm, smells like texas <laughs> And a half teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, so I'm going to go about seven twists. Is there no salt in that recipe? No. I looked in here salt. twice, and it does not have yeah. salt. But I'd salt your ribs before you... Just salt the ribs? Yeah. Okay. So now, I think that's it. Let's see. Tablespoon of butter, onion, garlic, cola, soda, pop, same thing. Tomato paste, water, ketchup. Shire sauce, mustard, cayenne pepper, we're using the, uh, the Slappy Mama, liquid smoke, paprika, ground black pepper, and then of course we also used some cumin to make the boss happy. 
So I got that all in my bowl. See, I told you I was putting it in a bowl. And we'll just stir that up. Mainly want to make sure I get that tomato paste broken down. No way it's even as it cooks into the it cooks into the meat. And I'm really curious as to see how this tastes. So I will put my finger in it. You know why? Because I can. Get all them onions mixed in there so they can start soaking up all that goodness. Let's see what this is like for a sugar-free barbecue sauce. That's good. I know. It's mm. it's a spinoff of like an old tried and true crock pot mixture that people have always like the cola and onion barbecue. I like it was one of the first recipes I ever learned in the slow cooker. Wow. So when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, that'll work. That's <laughs> yeah, that's got a really good flavor. And it's gonna work on some ribs. So salt my ribs mm -hmm. really well just to give it some more flavor. And that taste in that. I mean, there's some salt. Definitely in the ketchup, and some of like in the Penzies has got, or not the Penzies, the Slap Your Mama's got salt in it as well. Yeah. But it could have used a little more salt. In fact, a lot more salt. And I like salt, so I'm gonna salt it. Well, that's rich. a lot of meat. So. And I'm just gonna take this mixture that we've got and pour it directly on my ribs. Make sure it gets on the tops, and then it'll soak in on the bottom there. And it just about covered them up, which is a good thing. That'll work. Get all this goodness out of there. One more swipe. And there. So now, that is going to soak into those ribs anywhere between 8 to 10 hours. I don't know, because I have not cooked ribs in this Ninja IQ that we have. So I can't tell you until we get it done just how long it's going to take. But I'll know when they're done, whenever I can reach in there, burn my fingers, and twist the bones in the ribs, and the bones pop out. That's what you're looking for. So we're going to set this on low. We're going to set it for 10 hours, and then we're going to check it at 8. Yep. Actually, we'll check it at 6. Okay. If we're back, in then, back by then, because we've got some more stuff to explore around here. But in the meantime, while this is cooking, you can check out our trip to see the fossils and... The Rio Grande Village. The Rio Grande Village. That's and right. The hot With the hot springs. You see me dipping my toes in the water. <laughs> my ugly, ugly toes. Right now. In three, two, one. <laughs>
we're at the end of February, so it'd be a month. <laughs> I don't we think don't, or a couple I don't weeks think anyway. It's gonna come in time for us. So, but we think that the the little food stores like near the campgrounds inside the park, yeah, might have uh, some lunch meat. We've got some things packed just in case, um, but we were kind of wanting to do sandwiches today. So, yeah. um, they've got. There are different visitor centers around the park, and at those visitor centers, they'll have uh, like there's a couple gas stations down here, which that's a good thing. They'll have like strategically placed where yeah. you're going to have to get gas. <laughs> um, but they they've also got like a convenience store kind of thing. So like yeah, kind of like where we're at. Hopefully, the ones we're going to will have uh, lunch meat. That's where we got our sandwiches for yesterday. But um, yes. It's, it's not like you're going to have a lot of variety like you would at a, no. a super center. And a uh, camper kitchen tip for those of you that are RVing is what we did before we came here, which has been really, really handy, is we packed our freezer with all kinds of meat. So we do have meat that we can thaw out and cook for dinner and that kind of stuff. But we were looking for like more lunchy kind of things, which we didn't fill our freezer our fridge with which yeah. we should have like stuff you're going to eat on the run yes or on the hike yes hey dog canyon trail yes I don't think they got cool names for, for places that dog canyon trail uh there's another there's like a dagger dagger something dagger draw dagger valley dagger something i i don't know what that one is there's so much down here i mean and you look in every different direction and the mountain ranges change and it's it's beyond anything I could possibly explain on camera to you guys. It's just so beautiful down here. You don't want to drive fast. You want to drive slow just so you can take it all in and see the occasional jackrabbit or coyote or well, and the elusive roadrunner. <laughs> um, and to be fair, he's only taping this right now because we've been through this part already. Otherwise, He'd be so. He'd be, oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Yeah. So yesterday, <laughs> driving through, was like, whoa! There was whoa, no way we could take whoa. it yesterday. Yeah. But it's just it's just because it's that pretty down here. Yeah. And learning what kind of vegetation down here is pretty cool, and seeing how the Native Americans would use the vegetation, like the yucca plants. Uh, Miss Ed, do you remember what they used the yucca plants for? What? Miss Ed has her earbuds. Oh, in. Addie's listening to music. What? Do you remember what they used the yucca plants for? That's right. Cool stuff like that. Nerd stuff. Nerd stuff. But we're gonna go on up here to this dinosaur exhibit, uh, dinosaur exhibit, and see if we can find ourselves some dinosaur bones. Yay! We got there, Ed. It's my Big Ben Junior Ranger notebook, and I gotta complete at least eight activities because I'm age seven to eleven, and. Then I have to go to a visitor center and do do this. Got to say the pledge and then send my name. Somebody you know what I got to do? She gets a badge. I yeah. got to get out of the road. Yeah. <laughs> dinosaur bone exhibit it was awesome yeah. it answered a lot of questions for me as like how did this all come to be how is there this giant desert between this mountain these mountain ranges and it pretty much explained it all that 70 million years ago right where we're driving through was an ocean and the tops of the mountains were actually on the ocean floor and, and they then, have a, um, they found a fossil <clears throat> of a really creepy looking fish. <laughs> ugly fish. I got video of that. Um, 
and they they said they actually found one it wasn't here was it in kansas that they found the same kind of fish and it had a six foot fossil inside of it so they said what might have happened is that it ate this six foot fish and then as the six foot fish struggled it actually choked the bigger fish and then they both died and became this fossil that's awesome, baby but that's <laughs> that's awesome that's but my so all this right here was ocean and then as the oceans receded and the mountains rose and sediment action took place with the rivers and everything that's how we got to where we are now and they're still finding uh, fossils down here it's so diverse and chickens are yeah. related to dinosaurs apparently yes chickens are related to dinosaurs so yes. you're, you're eating the, the 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 late 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 generation of tyrannosaurus rex and addy was very uh tickled at finding a horse that was the size of a dog and had, had, like a, dog. had a pet it was like a cross between a yeah. horse and it a dog it was like hydrocosarium oh. i mean hydrocosarium one cool thing though is that horses became extinct all through here and then the spanish reintroduced horses really? 500 years ago back down here so the horses that were here weren't american horses they were spanish horses nice hence color. the accent you know if we lived here 70 million years ago, we wouldn't be eating Mississippi chicken. We'd be eating Mississippi Tyrannosaurus Rex. And <laughs> well, I don't think we could I get one of them in a crock pot. Uh, Indiana <laughs> Hoosier stew. Yeah, he, he, he would be eating Mississippi Hoosiers. So now we're on to Rio Grande? Yes. Or Rio Grande? Yes, yes, There's that's a debate. The plan. There's a debate on how to say it. I think we're supposed to say it the way that they say it, which is Rio Grande, but we say Rio Grande. Of course, we call it Creek or Creek too. So, all right, onward to the Rio Grande. standing in the United States of America that is Mexico yes all separated by the Rio Grande River yes. which is about I don't know 25 30 foot across so we'd swim to the other side but I didn't bring my bikini or my passport so <laughs> we're gonna stay on this side for now there's a hot spring down here they actually had an old bathhouse that was built in the early 1900s and I guess people would come down and hang out in the bathhouse and it's eroded away over time. They say that the water that comes out from that spring right there is geothermally heated, geothermally heated, and it's a constant 105 degrees. So it's like a really nice warm bath. So that geothermal probably created a lot of this stuff. Yeah. With what, earthquakes or volcanoes or? I'm a foodie, not a geologist. Oh. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Sounds good. Sure. Sounds like we knew what we were talking about. The rest of, of the water, though, is cold. Yeah, everybody's so. jumping out of the bathhouse and into the water and screaming. <laughs> so um, maybe I don't want to bring my bikini down here. <laughs> I don't think you want to see that anyway. It's absolutely beautiful. You just, as, as much as I could do this and show y'all what we're seeing right now, it's it just wouldn't do it justice if you just come down here and check it out. It's... It's breathtaking. Every view is different. And we've got, I think we've maybe seen 1% of the park so far, so we've got a lot yeah. more to see. And the sand is so soft. <laughs> Addie's digging the sand. Um, but 
Indians once lived down here. We saw the petroglyphs uh -huh. and the pictographs. Yes. And which was early Indian graffiti. But it is really cool though how close you can actually get to the pictographs uh -huh. and the um, the I forget the name of the petroglyphs. Other, petroglyphs, because you can walk right up to them. Which was it's I mean in back the few that we've been able to see they keep you real far away yeah. from. So it's like it's not you can't do that every place. So. Hopefully people will stop messing yeah. with them. Leave, leave it alone. We want to come back yeah. and see it again. Yeah. Really, I'd come back here anytime. This is gorgeous. Yeah. My arm's getting tired. I'm going to put the camera down now. Okay. <laughs> I feel better. And now we are back from our adventures in Big Bend National Park where we went and saw the dinosaur exhibit and the hot springs and the Rio Grande River. Not so grande right there, but it was still beautiful. And just the way the sun hit the landscape was absolutely gorgeous. We got Miss Ad in the background. She's doing a little background music for us, a little mood music, what you heard earlier. And our ribs are done. That's right, the star of the show is ready to go. And we put this on there for about 10 hours, and it took about six and a half hours, is about how long we were gone on a run that we were doing. And they're done. And the reason I know that, one, that's hot. And two, you can do this with your fingers if you want to. Luckily, I've got tongs, so I don't have to. But if you reach in there, grab one of the middle bones and give it a twist. If the bones twist out of the meat really easy, they're done and ready to go on the grill. These bones twisted really easy out of there, so I know they're ready. So I've got a hot grill going over here, about 550 degrees, and all I want to do is finish these puppies off on the grill, hopefully in one piece. Hot, 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 I'm telling you. So we'll pop that on there, just like that. It again with this one falling apart. I think we're just going to have that. Pop that on there. Yeah, these are falling right, the bones are falling way out of these real easy. So I'll probably have a little bit of a mess to clean up. Naturally, right? These aren't either. falling apart on the grill as we speak, too, which is not a bad thing. I've had worse problems. And uh, we'll just lay that later. So I'm going to watch these real close because I don't want to burn them, but I kind of want to brown them on the outside, caramelize whatever sugars are on there in that sauce, which won't be much since it's low carb. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to break that half right there and make a serving size. Oh yeah, just get some good grill marks on there. Now you could do these with St. Louis style ribs as well. Yeah, those are falling apart real easy, so I gotta be careful. And when I got those going, and again, I wanna watch them, I'm going to take this onto the saute feature. It's one of the things I, it's one of the things I like about our camper is the fact I got power out here. So I want to turn this on stove top high. And I'm going to boil that because again, what I want to do is reduce that down to a sauce, and I'll put that over the top of those ribs. Get some of that little meat out of there. Here's a bone. Now, since we're making this low carb, there may be some things in there that you wouldn't want to feed your dog, so I'm definitely not going to give that dog that bone anyway. But, oh my gosh, these smell so good. I wish I could give you that smell. These Put that up here on top. Oh yeah. We so said we were out all day running around getting groceries today. And we were gone, I would say even an hour too long for these because these are just fall apart. Good, oh my goodness, they're falling apart as I speak. Pop that in the bowl, these are done already. side.
but I'm going to let these continue to grill while I'm letting this boil up and then when this is boiled down we'll come back and baste our ribs and I promise you we will eat them. Alright, so it took just a few minutes to reduce this down. There wasn't that much liquid. It's mostly fat that's in there. You got the fat from the ribs, plus you got some butter in there. Not that much butter, it's mostly the fat from the ribs. But baby back ribs have plenty of fat on them. You could also use St. Louis if you want to. I'm not sure how much time difference there would be. I would think you'd want to cook your St. Louis ribs a little bit longer. These baby back ribs, I probably could have got them out an hour ago had we been back. But we went on a grocery run. And the closest super center, if you want to say, anything other than a small convenience mart, is about 95 miles away in Fort Stockton, Texas. So we had a little bit of a haul. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but the sauce, what once was the juices, has reduced down into a sauce. It's really thickened up quite well. So what I'm going to do, now I'm going to, first base these. These are the ones that Mama wants to take a picture of. We can't eat these, sorry. But I'm just going to take, I think I'll first kill my heat. There we go. And I'm just going to base some sauce on there, on these ribs. The reason I want to put these under the grill is I wanted to get some char marks on there. Kind of burn some of the outside of it. Not burn the meat, but Kind of put some scorch marks on there. That along with that liquid smoke makes for a really good flavor as well as a good texture on there. There we go. I think she'll be quite pleased with the pictures that these will bring out. But check this out. Yeah. Now when I say that these are fall off the bone tender, here's a bone. Other than pulling this off of the grill, I haven't messed with the bone. Watch this. It twists right out of there. Completely clean. That's a tender rib. Now again, I'll put this back because she's got to take a picture of that. And I'll baste my own. Mm -mm -mm, these smell so good. Well, if you can hear Aki on the inside of the RV whining, but he really wants a taste. Since it's got that Coke Zero in there, though, maybe it's cooked out. I don't know, but since you're not using sugar and it's got an artificial sweetener, I wouldn't feed that to your dog. Absolutely not, because I don't want to take a chance on hurting our puppy. Oh, yeah, these are so pretty. Now this is the plate that I'm going to eat right here. And again, I can take that bone, pop it right out of there, it comes out clean. Didn't see that? We'll do it again. Look at that bone. Slides right out, no meat on it. Nothing but pure deliciousness right here. Hot deliciousness. You're not eating all the dinner, are you? Just enough for me. This is a, uh, it's messy. Mmm. <laughs> so this is low carb, very low sugar, very low sugar. And you can taste that. The, the Coke Zero gives it a little sweetness. It gives it a little bit of that, that caramel flavor that a Coke would give. If you put a soda, pop, whatever you call it, into a sauce like that. The liquid smoke plus that cumin that we put in there was really good. Um, there's not that much heat to it. I know we put some Slap Your Mom in there, but it's so spread out. I can kind of feel it on the back of the tongue, but it's not enough at all to, be, to make you think, ooh, that's hot. It just makes it feel warm. And plus it gives those extra spices that are really good flavor. It's got that chili powder in there. Mmm, that liquid smoke comes off the back end, makes it feel like you're eating it off of, like the ribs were actually smoked. And again, we did this on a propane grill. We could have did it over charcoal. Either way, it'd be, it's really good. But those are really good ribs. If you'd like a tomato-based recipe for ribs, this is something you go to. If you want to do low carb on your ribs instead of that high sugar barbecue sauce, this is uh, this is definitely a winner. 
But again, we want to thank you guys for watching another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy from our camper kitchen. Uh, check out this recipe and many more over at RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog. We'll give you many more uh, shots from our travels around here and a few more dishes as well. And like we always say around here, laugh often, eat good food, and speak life. See you later, guys. Addie, play us a tune out. Oh, and by the way, this is the next day after we made those ribs. And if you're thinking to yourself, man, those were just too fall apart tender to be pretty or to do anything else with, let me show you something. A little bacon, a little ranch, a little tortilla. Perfect taco. Trust me.